Wow, that thing is so strong. Look at that. There's so much current. Hey everyone, I'm going to explain what exactly happened in that video. People have been asking about that video for a long time, ever since I posted it, wanting me to explain it better. There are a lot of videos out there that I have created, probably a few dozen, where I easily could have died because of a deadly situation, but I knew how to handle them, and there's some things you gotta learn about these pressures. Now in this video, there's a few things I may try to downplay, but that's only because there was not the right, right circumstances. If there was maybe a few more feet of water on top of the lake drain at the time of this, it would have been very deadly. I'm going to talk about it as we watch it again. Right now, at this point, the culvert is going through a change from just falling into a pit until it starts becoming a siphon. It's about to start vacuuming, and that's when I realize it is time to get off this thing. What that means is there is so much water going into the culvert more is falling into the pit than it can handle, so it starts siphoning. As it starts siphoning, the entire pipeline, the weight of that water, is starting to pull, making this thing very dangerous at this point. This is what we call differential pressure. At the beginning, I just started raking away. At this point, it wasn't dangerous yet, even though I opened up a little bit it's just falling into a hole. There's only about eight inches worth of pressure at this point. You can see the whirlpool right there. Even if I was to sit myself right on top of that whirlpool, it's not going to make me get stuck. There's only eight inches of pressure. But when it got to that point where it started siphoning, that is when you might... It's going to attempt to hold you down. In this case, because you have a big grate, you would have to block a lot of that grate to actually get stuck to it. It would be much more dangerous if the grate was maybe 10% its size, then you tried to get onto it. But honestly, even when it was at its full differential pressure in this situation, I don't think I would have got stuck on it. But the, I got off because the fact that it started to bend the grate. It wasn't physically bending the steel. It was a hinged grate. You could open like half of it on hinges and you could see that was starting to flex at this point. But as you can see on the screen, there's a whirlpool. There is no siphoning happening yet. It's just falling into the pit. But as I remove more, there's so much water going down there, it completely fills the beginning of the pipeline. So it starts to pull even more in as the water's leaving. Basically, it's a giant siphon. Watch this. You can see in the water, the vacuum is starting to begin as you see debris and leaves on the bottom right side of the screen starting to come into frame. It's creating an undertow now in the lake, bringing more debris over. And in this case, I'm just mostly grinding it through because I'm fighting the pressure. If I grind it through, it can just take it through the system, no problem at all. It's just kind of dumb fighting the vacuum, taking it off. Unless I'm doing big clumps like you see on the top of the screen at this time. That's not actually on the grate. But it will eventually get there. Now watch as we move on to the next section of this video. Now I'm doing it from the shore. Because I know that there is danger there. I personally don't think it would have the power to hold me down. Because you would have to cover most of the grate... To be able to feel that pressure. My body, even if I tried, I don't even think I could block 20% of this entrance. And it would just go around me the majority of it. Yes, believe me, you would feel the pressure. But I don't think it's enough to pull me down. Now, on another hand, if this grate was the size of a storm drain. And it was draining this lake with a smaller pipe. Because it's small, I could potentially block a ton of that. And it's not just water falling in anymore. I would have the entire pipeline pressure holding me down. This is a four-foot pipe. I, if I was to throw like a piece of plywood over the top of this, it would take a while for that vacuum to break, and you would just not be able to get it up. But your body alone, I don't think I'd be able to block that. But on the other hand, it is still a giant hazard, and that's why I got off it. My training told me, get off this thing, because I knew what started to happen. It was a siphon. Now, you just saw on the other side, 
the pipe wasn't completely full. That's because it's not pitched the right way to be able to handle maximum capacity. At some point in there, it's breaking. Now I decide to go back on and clear some debris, still from the edge. Now the vacuum has broken. There is no pressure holding anything down at this point. It's just falling in with gravity and passing through the pipe. It's over. No more pressure. It's back to normal operations at this point. All right, I hope my explanation of this was interesting. Now I'm gonna use a few other clips to explain other situations because it, it's not just this. Many storm drains will do the same thing, create that pressure, but I have not seen any of them suck this hard. But I'm definitely not gonna try getting down and sitting on a storm drain while it's draining a flooded street because I know there are some that have been in that situation. Imagine I somehow tried to do that and I actually got a seal with my body. Like if I put my stomach down on the grate like an idiot, that would really mess you up if it was in the process of siphoning that water. It's pretty dangerous. Let's move on to the next clip. All right, here we are at a street that I'm draining. As you can see, it's not going down that much because it's not siphoning. Most country roads like this, the pipe inside the structure is usually about two feet, maybe even 18 inches. So the pipe is smaller than the grate. So the pressure is not gonna be at the top. But when I do this, I always make sure the grate is secure because if you somehow slip down inside that, you're never gonna get back out of that thing. And down inside it is where the danger is. You're gonna get sucked right up against that pipe underwater inside the structure. And that's what makes it super dangerous. Now on the other hand, if it was a big city, the structure would be leading down to a gigantic underground pipeline. Now, differential pressure can also be kind of dangerous in a situation like this. A culvert is more dangerous when it's completely submerged because you can't see the hazard. Now this case, you can see the flow, you can see the hazard, and I know in this situation, I can fight it. It's not going to suck me into the little hole. In this situation, even if I sat down, it's not going to drag me. There's just not enough of it. But if this culvert had a bigger pitch, and it was maybe a foot higher the water, it would be far more dangerous and probably suck me through it. And that's why you got to think about that stuff before you touch anything like this. Most towns, it actually says on their page, we want you to help keep the storm drains clear. Culverts are a different story depending on the area. Yeah, you just should not be touching those ones. I do this as a volunteer job on the side. Just love it. Now this right here, what you're seeing on the screen, would be the ultimate differential pressure. The intake of this dam. The other side of this. If you were a scuba diver, you'd get stuck against it and die as your air runs out. If the initial getting sucked up to it doesn't hurt you first, because if you're swimming by that thing, it could easily break your back as it tries to suck you through a tiny little hole inside the dam. Anyways, hope this video was interesting. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment.